Thank you for having me these past 10 nights. It's been a blessing to be with you. I just would like to thank all the volunteers and people who gave their time to make these majalis work. Sister Anisa and Sister Muhammad and Sayyid Ayman Khalaf and Sayyid Muhammad Khalaf and Brother Ayman, Brother Abdullah and Brother Abdullah. They've been serving us every single night. The first one's here and the last one's out. And I would just like to recite a loud salawat for them, please. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Today is the day of Ashura. The day when Islam was saved through the neck and the blood of our master, Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. And it was only in a few hours when the army of Yazid ran towards the tents of Imam al-Hussein and they had no more protectors, no more men to help them. And they would burn the tents as the woman and the children would run and scream and the daughter of Mam Hussein alayhi salam's earrings would be ripped from her ears and they would be shackled in chains by their wrists and their necks no one to help them no one to protect them the family of the Prophet of Islam and many people ask why did Imam al Hussein take the woman if this was going to happen. When the Imam left Medina, he insisted that the woman, that they come with him. And some people told him, don't take the woman with you. But he insisted that they have to come. Because if the women and the children did not come to Karbala, there would be no story for us to live by anymore. And we would not be here remembering this today. Without the woman in Karbala, then Imam al Hussein and his 72 companions would have been martyred in the desert, and Yazid and his men could have easily diluted it and made it into whatever they wanted to be. And so the women were the mouthpieces of the story of Karbala. Before the Imam went, 
to the battlefield, he came to say the Zainab and he told her that now my allegiance, it goes to my son Ali Sajjad, Zain al Abidin alayhi salam. Now he is your Imam and you have to protect and serve him. And when Imam al Hussein was martyred and said that Zainab and Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam were taken captives, Umar ibn Sa'ad made sure that they went past all the bodies in Karbala. The martyrs on the floor, heads on spears and bodies mutilated. And as they would go by, Sayyidah Zainab would begin to recite poetry, a majlis for them on the day of Ashura, the 11th, the night of Ashura. She already began the mourning process, the one that we're doing right now. And they took her to Kufa to see Ibn Ziyad. And he was sitting there happy, gloating. And she came in with her head held high. She told those with her to come inside around her. So she comes in with Izz and pride and dignity. Despite coming in with shackles, despite losing her beloved. She comes in with dignity and Izz and Ibn Ziyad asks her, who are you? He's astonished with this kind of character in a woman. And she doesn't respond. And he asks again, who are you? And she doesn't respond. Now, who are you to ask me who I am? She has Izz and dignity. This is not easy. After everything that you have faced, you come in with this defiance and strength. They tell her that this is Zainab, the son of Ali, the daughter of Ali, alayhi salam. And then he tells her, how did you find with what Allah did to your family? And she said, Alhamdulillah, alladhi akramana bi Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi Muhammad wa She said, I praise God that he gave us Muhammad, that Muhammad is from us and our family. He told her, how did you find what happened in Karbala? And did she look to the heads on the spears? Did she look to the head of her brother on the golden tray? Did she think of the baby with an arrow? Did she think of her sons? She responded by saying, وَمَا رَأَيْتُ إِلَّا جَمِيلًا I saw nothing but beauty. When Ibn Ziyad asked who Imam Zain al-Abidin was, they told him, this is the son of Hussein. He ordered for him to be killed. So she ran to him and held him and said, if you want to kill him, you have to kill me as well. And at least at that time, at the very least, they would not kill women. At the very least. And so then they were taken captives, the women and the children and the Imam. After everything they had faced, with the heads on the spears, they take them to Sham, where Yazid is waiting. They come in and he gets the golden tray with the head of the Imam and he starts to recite poetry and say, this is for what my grandfather suffered at Badr. Badr was a few decades before when the Mushrikeen came to fight the Prophet and Imam Ali alayhi salam, and the Muslims killed them. And they were the ancestors of Yazid. So now this is like a revenge for Yazid because he could not defeat, because his ancestors and his grandfathers, Abu Sufyan, could not defeat Rasulullah and Imam Ali. This was the revenge to get the head of Imam al Hussein. And he starts to play with the lips of the Imam with a stick. And Sayyidah Zainab stands defiant against him and tells him, How dare you touch the lips of Abu Abdullah? You think that Allah favors you over us. What boast is there in 30,000 verse 72? What kind of coward would boast about something like that? But what would you expect from someone who is a descendant of the one who eats livers? His grandmother Hind ate the liver of Hamza in Uhud. And she starts to compare the lineage of Yazid with her own lineage. And she has a defiant speech which shakes the throne of Yazid. People actually begin to cry. 
of people who oppress her actually begin to cry. She shook the hearts not only of the people but the oppressors themselves. Imagine you go to the oppressor and you shake the hearts of the Saudi monarchy, monarchy or the leaders of the Zionist entity. Imagine you shake their hearts, you stand defiant in front of them despite your family just being martyred. And she stood there defiant and her family began to rise up. Imam Sajjad rises up and gives a speech. And the young Fatima, daughter of Imam Hussain they all begin to speak. Yazid becomes scared. He gets scared of a revolt happening. And he wants to release them soon after. And so, when he tells them that they are to be released, Sayyidah Zainab demands that they have a house in order to mourn Abu Abdullah And so in Damascus, in the very kingdom of Yazid, they have a house and they wear black and people come and they begin to recite the story of Karbala, the story that we're about to tell you, the story that we're about all to remember right now. And everyone begins to cry. And then they return to Medina with the head of the Imam. And the people of Medina reach them with open arms and tears. And Sayyidah Zainab goes straight to the grave of Rasulullah and tells him, Grandfather Hussein has been martyred. And everyone gathered and again she recited poetry in a majlis for Imam al Hussein. So, in her memory and in the memory of all the martyrs of Karbala, in the memory of the 72, in the memory of the six month old baby, in the memory of the general who lost his arms trying to retrieve the water for the children. And in memory of the blessed grey beard of Imam al-Hussein covered in blood, we will now recite a majlis for Abu Abdullah alayhi wa salam. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, look at this water. I remember that for three days, they did not have even this much water. Inshallah, we can keep dry throats until after Salat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad <coughs> Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad The day of Ashura the night of goodbyes has come to an end. <coughs> Salat time approaches. Imam Al Hussein tells Ali Al Akbar, my son, recite the other. Ali Akbar stands up, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The last time Ali Akbar ever recites those words, calling the Muslims to Salah. In the midst of the battle, Imam al Hussein prays toward his Lord as 30,000 beasts await him with swords. His companions tell him, We want to go and fight to protect you Abu Abdullah 
But Abu Fadl says, no, I want to go first. And so Habib ibn Mudahir and Abu Fadl begin a dispute in who will go out to defend Ahlul Bayt. They decide the companions will go before the family of Rasulullah. One by one, they go in flanks, the right and the left, brave soldiers of Allah. One by one, they meet their death in front of Abu Abdullah. Brothers and sisters, imagine your best friends dying one by one in front of you as they try to defend you and your family and every single one shouts out Alayka minni salam my Imam Ya Abu Abdullah Imagine the patience of holding the head of your best friend in your arms as the Imam holds the head of Habib ibn Mudahir. A man in the enemy camp seems like he has a change of heart. They ask him, Hur. You are a man of strength. Why do you look so confused? He tells them, I am choosing between heaven and hell right now. He decides to leave the camp of Yazid. He goes towards Abu Abdullah. He bends down to his legs. My master, forgive me. Would you accept me to be part of your army? Would you accept someone like me to die for you? The Imam tells him, You are whore as your mother named you. You are the free one broke out of the shackles of the slavery of shaitan. Hor is overjoyed. He goes to fight the enemy as a sacrifice to Imam al Hussein. But now all of the companions or down, Imam only has his army of his family left. No more companions. Imagine all your friends have left you. Imagine you only have your family to defend your woman. Ali Akbar comes to his father. Father, can I be the first one to go and defend our family? Imagine giving permission to your son, to your 18-year-old son, to go and meet the fate of all those who fell before him. Imam al Hussein tells Akbar, my son, Go and say goodbye to your mother. Ali Akbar goes to the tent. They all begin to hold him. Say, the Zainab hugs her nephew Akbar, the one who looks just like Rasul Allah. Young Sukaina grabs his legs, brother. Just wait. Don't go yet. Halil Akbar leaves the tent. He rides towards the enemies. I am Ali, the son of Hussein, the son of Ali. He fights the enemies. 
the grandson of Haidar in the war like his grandfather but soon a spear enters into his chest and the swords begin to rain down on Akbar The blood gushes out onto the horse It blinds the horse's eyes The horse in confusion Instead of running back to the tents It goes to the enemy lines Thousands surround Ali Akbar As they rain down with their swords Ali calls out Ya Bata alayka minni salam Imam al Hussein runs toward Ali al Akbar The cowards begin to run Where do you run, O oh cowards? And you have killed my Ali When he sees Ali al Akbar He throws himself onto him Puts his cheek onto the cheek of Akbar. He carries Ali al Akbar back to the tent. The young children even begin to wear their clothes to go to the battlefield. Sayyid Zainab's sons go to the battlefield Qasim goes to the battlefield Each of them too small to get onto their horses on their own Abu Fadl training them before they go out to battle Imam al Hussein placing them onto their horses. They will go out and they will meet their fate. Qasim is trampled and cut as he is still alive. His broken body on the ground. Wamah, Uncle Hussein. Imam al Hussein, after losing his son, loses the reminder of his son Hassan. He runs and he kills the killer of Qasim. He sees that Qasim's bones are broken. He lifts up his arms, his limp and broken arms, he places them under his own arms tries to hug the broken body of Qasim and carries him back to the tent. The children are so thirsty. Imam al Hussein's lips are so dry. But there is one man who is watching all of this, who wants to enter the battlefield, who wants to change everything. Who wants to bring the water back to the children? Who is in the place of Ali ibn Abi Talib? Al Abbas watches with anger. How dare they treat my family this way? <laughs> he says to his brother Mawla. Let me seek vengeance upon these kuffar. Let me bring the water to Sukaina. But Abbas, if you go, I will have no army left. Go and retrieve the water, my dear brother. 
Abu Fadl holds the flag. They say that the entire flag was damaged, but only the part that Abu Fadl was holding with his hand was still brand new. He would never let go of the flag. He rides towards the river Anyone who comes in his way Abbas easily dealt with The Lion of God The Son of the Lion of God It's as if Haidar himself Was there protecting his son Imam al Hussein. Imam al Hussein could see the flag amongst all the mushrikeen. The children awaited the water. So Kaina would tell them, Uncle Abbas will bring us water. Don't worry. Abu Fadl pierces through the enemy ranks. He gets to the riverbed, no one can stop Abbas. He bends down into the river, he picks up the water to his mouth, and he throws it back down. Ya nafs min ba'd al Husayni, min ba'lin kunti an la takuni. How can I ever drink before my master of Abdullah? How can I drink if Sukaina is thirsty? He places the water in a container. He gets onto his horse. He takes his way back to the tent. The enemies try to stop him. They begin to surround him. Abu Fadl fighting his way. My Lord, just let me reach the tent. As Abu Fadl is fighting, a man strikes down with his sword onto the arm of Abbas. Abbas's arm falls onto the floor. He sees his own arm on the floor. The blood spilling out from him. But he carries on fighting He keeps the water container with him Still holding on to the flag No arm to protect himself with He begins to kick at the enemies As they try to approach Abu Fadl He starts traveling a far distance His arm is now well behind him but now another man comes and strikes down the other arm. Abu Fadl now has no more hands. The water container in his mouth. He realizes no longer can he fight. He attempts to run towards the camps. It doesn't matter what happens to me as long as they drink the water. As Abu Fadl still has hope, an arrow pierces into the water container. The water drips out. Now Abbas is standing in the middle of the battlefield. He has no water to take back to the tent And he has no arms He looks around He looks at the enemies around him He looks towards the tents, the children waiting Imagine how he feels He looks towards the river 
What does Abbas do in the midst of the battle? Another arrow comes towards the eye of Abbas and someone strikes him on the head and he falls face first to the ground no arms to break his fall as he falls down Mawlaya Hussain Ya Khidr Gakhak Hussain runs towards them What have you done to my Abbas? <laughs> the enemy to run away from the Imam. Abu Father, before dying, asked one last request O oh man who is approaching me, just let me say goodbye to my brother before you kill me. And the Imam tells him, Ya Abbas, it's your brother Hussein. Don't you recognize me? The blood had got into the eyes of Abu Fadil. Al-an al-kasara dhahri He takes the head of Abbas into his lap. And Abbas puts his head back onto the ground. Once again, he takes the head into his lap. And Abbas puts his on to the ground. My brother, son of my father, why are you doing this? Mawlaya Hussein, right now my head is in. But in a few moments, in whose laps will your head be? Where will your head be when Shemar is approaching you? My brother, I have one more request. Don't take me back to the tent. I can't face Zainab and Sukaina like this. I couldn't get up the water. Imam Al Hussein has no army left. Imagine your Imam standing alone, 30,000 in front of him. Knowing that his companions and his family died thirsty. Sayyida Zainab alayhi salam calls to the Imam. She tells him, your baby is no longer crying. As the Imam takes the baby into his hands, the army sent forth an arrow into the neck of Ali al The Imam holds the dead baby in his hands. Even a baby was martyred in Karbala. Imam al Hussein. <laughs> Imam al Hussein stood outside defiant, facing the army on his own. He looked towards the army as he called out, Halvin Nasre. Are there any more helpers to make me victorious? Is there anyone else that can help the family?
of Rasulullah. Is it only me that's left? It's time for the goodbye to Hussein. With the He goes back to the tent. He says goodbye to his woman. He says goodbye to Rabab. He hugs Layla and says goodbye. Then he goes to his sick son Ali Sajjad. He tells him, my son, it's time to say goodbye. I'm going to the battlefield. Ali Sajjad asks him, Father, where is my brother Akbar? Why isn't he with you? He says, Akbar has been martyred. He says, where is Uncle Abbas? He says, your Uncle Abbas has been martyred. There is no one left but me. So Ali Sajjad forces himself to stand up. He holds his crane and drags his sword through the ground, trying to leave the tent. My son, where are you going? I will not leave you on your own, Father. Oh, my son, you must stay. The truth will prevail through you. You have to stay with Zainab and the children. He says his final goodbyes to Ali Sajjad. He leaves the tent. There's one more goodbye. Akhi Ya Hussein. Sayyidah Zainab comes to her brother. They embrace one last time. Brother, I have a request. I have a wasiya from our mother, Fatima. She just showed me your neck. The Imam shows her his neck. And she begins to kiss him on his neck. Why are you doing this, Ya Zainab? My mother told me to kiss you here. For it will be here where the dagger pierces your throat. So the Imam bent down, he kissed her wrist. This is the wasiya from Ali, for when you will be taken captive. So Imam al Hussein gets onto his horse, Duljana. My dear horse, I know you're tired. I know you're thirsty. Just get me to the Maidan one last time. I promise this is the final time. I promise you, Duljana. Just get me to the battlefield. But it's almost as if the horse didn't want to go. His head was held down as if it wanted to say, Mawlai, don't you see Sukaina holding on to my legs? So the Imam took Sukaina in his lap. He began to put his hand on her head like they do for the orphan. She told him, Father, are you going now to die? He told her, how can I not when I have no more helpers? 
She told him, can we just please go back to Medina? He tells Sukaina one last goodbye. He gives her to Zaina. Zaina, take care of my daughter for me. <laughs> the Imam sits onto his horse. They run towards the battlefield. The horse is galloping. And Al Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, a ferocious warrior, he told Omar ibn Sa'd, If you want to fight me, come to me one on one, one by one. Don't you know my lineage? Don't you know I am the son of Fatima? I am the grandson of Rasulullah. They tell him we know that you are the son of Fatima. We know you are the son of Muhammad. But we want to kill you for our hatred towards Ali ibn Abi Talib. And so the enemies begin to fight Imam al Hussein one by one. They come from the right, the Imam kills him. He comes from the left, the Imam kills him. No one can defeat him in normal combat. Ahmad ibn Sa'd says, There's no way we will beat him if we carry on like this. Start to throw your arrows, start to throw your spears. And a three-pronged arrow pierces the chest of Imam al Hussein, and the poison begins to run through his body. The Imam is starting to feel so exhausted. He has already buried his loved ones, and now he's fighting thousands by keep on fighting the spears would come towards him they would start throwing pebbles and stones they would bring down their swords on Imam al Hussein. the Imam would be covered in blood now the Imam couldn't stay on his horse he fell off of the horse but then he gets up once again they start to attack him once again and he starts fighting them off whenever the Imam would slow down and stop moving Omar ibn Sa'ad would see is he still alive he would say Hussein now we will go attack your tent and the Imam would stand back up Leave my family alone. <laughs> Again, the Imam would get so tired and need the rest. Then Omar ibn Sa'd says, Now we will go to Zainab. Imam al Hussein stands back up. He begins to fight them. As he fights them, he keeps remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He keeps saying, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. As he keeps fighting thousands of the enemies of Allah. But the pebbles, the spears, the swords begin to penetrate the body of the Imam. He is struck on the head and drops to the ground. The blood gushes forth down his grave beard. They all want to come. A man sees a ring on the finger of Abba Abdullah. He tries to take it off, but it wasn't coming off. So he cuts off the finger of Imam Al Hussein. The horses begin to run over the Imam. The Imam is trying to fight them off. But now no one wants to finish off the Imam. The Imam is laying there. Gharib, 
حسين مظلوم حسين He lays on the battlefield Each man doesn't want to come close They see the nur radiating from his face And so Shemir takes a dagger And walks towards the He sees Al Hussein laying on his back And he sits on the chest of Al Hussein Sayyid Zainab wants to see what's happening to my brother she goes on to an elevation what are you doing to my brother get up the horse comes back to the tent covered in blood comes back without its rider <laughs> I wish I was there Mola. <laughs> I wish they took my head instead of your head I wish they took my finger instead of your finger I wish they took my family Instead of your family <laughs> Shimmer sits onto the chest of Imam al And he grabs him by his beard Say you don't say you don't He's watching as the Imam looks into the eyes of Shemar He says the famous word, my lord I have offered my children to come and see you And if I am cut into pieces I would yearn for none other than you Shemar grabs him by the beard he brings the dagger to his throat He beheads Imam al Hussein. Hussein Wa Musibata Allah, the Almighty, the